Hey FlossTube, it is Friday, May 1st, 2020, and I am getting really excited about Mania. I started my first start this morning. Because you can totally not tell what that is. It is Mad Bluebird. It is a Bucilla kit from 2000, which does not seem like it's that old, but I guess in some circles, 20-year-old cross kit stitch kits are old. This is one of the kits that I got at one of my best ever thrift store cross stitch kit hauls. I did it shortly before I started filming the videos, so I don't have a video showing you all I found. I think someone had gotten rid of their entire stash of cross stitch kits. And there were a lot. I brought home 16 or so kits and I left plenty behind that weren't my taste. And they were all like $2 each. So I have had this little bluebird in my stash for a couple of years now. I knew I wanted to stitch him, but he was one of those someday when the time is right projects. Doesn't he look kind of angry sitting all alone there on his fence post? Isn't this a perfect project to be stitching when I'm kind of angry about quarantine and self-isolation? So I'm stitching a bluebird. I started him this morning and I'm going to do more on him tonight. I have a slightly different strategy for Mania this year. Last year I did not plan ahead. I just grabbed... On the morning of, I would grab whatever looked good and start gritting my fabric or pulling floss. So I would spend a pretty serious chunk of the day sometimes gritting before I even got to put in the full stitch. A single stitch. So what I am doing this year, I started gritting some stuff already and I'm going to stitch early in the day while my energy is hopefully high and then later in the day I will work on gritting the next day's project. Not everything needs gritting, even for me. And I would love to start 31 new projects. I don't expect life to cooperate and let me do that, but we'll see how close I can get. So I have already gritted this one, which, a oh, window with magpie. It's a Riolis kit that I got a couple years ago, and I like this one. It is, I should look at the dimensions on the package, because the package always says how big it's going to be. This is going to be big. It's on that same 10 count Ada that the ripe apples in the basket are on, and I've enjoyed stitching with that, so I don't think because it is 10 count that it'll take as long as it looks like it will take, and these realist kits tend to stitch up quickly, so this is high on my list of what I want to start next. I thought that today I was going to start this one. It is, what are you called? I should look before I start filming and take better notes. There's no name on this. I think it's a Stitcher's Alphabet or something like that. And I really thought I was going to start this today. I went to grid the fabric and there are no grid marks on the chart, but there are. This plastic is making me nuts. There are outlines around the individual sections, so I think if I carefully stitch the outline instead of gritting and get the edges to match up, that that will keep me from messing up too badly. Have my fabric gritted, I, or no, I don't have my fabric gritted because I'm doing the other thing. I have my fabric zigzagged. I thought the floss came pre-sorted because if you looked in the package and saw this, wouldn't you maybe think the floss was pre-sorted? I'm not quite sure where I left off when the phone rang, so what I was starting to say, I thought when I looked at it that these flosses were pre-sorted. They're not. They are in a numbered thing, but they're not sorted. There's a DMC listing that says how many strands of each color, and it should be pretty easy with my color card to figure out which floss is which, but I'm not going to be able to do that super fast. So. This got demoted from today's project to a sometime soon in the future project. I also have this one which I've showed you before. It is the Bacilla Dollhouse. 
and the kit comes with that frame. I have seen this stitched up in two antique stores since I found my kit. I love it. It looks gorgeous stitched. Have the fabric gridded, don't have the floss sorted, but there aren't that many colors, so soon on my list of things to start. You don't need to watch me put these back together, do you? And then Stitching Lessons, which is a realist kit I got for my birthday. Absolutely going to be a mania start. And then, and then, and then, and then. This is Thimbalina. It has been in my stash for a very, very long time, and I really wanted to stitch her, but I thought it had to be on linen. And I really should have looked to make sure there's no over one in here to make it linen more than an aesthetic choice. No, it looks like it's all whole stitches. So I've had this sitting in my stash for 15, 18 years because I thought it had to be on linen. And now I'm not feeling that way anymore. So I want to start her. I think that I will probably replace the Krynik and beads with something else. Because I'd rather have her stitched on less than the perfect, most glorious fabric choice than to never stitch her at all. I talked in the last video about how I was worried that I didn't have enough Ada. So I dug through my stash. I dug through everything. I knew I had more Ada than I thought I had because I couldn't not. I wish I had more white. I don't know why I've got so much red. I do. I picked it up really super cheap at the thrift store, but I found I got a decent conglomeration here. And then I was digging around in my sewing stash looking for something else and this is all Ada too. This needs to be washed because it has a funky smell that I must not have noticed in the thrift store when I got it, but I got Ada. I can start all the things, lots of the things. I have been running around a lot today. That is why I am so out of breath, running around here on our own property because it's been an adventure this week. I was coming home from driving my son to work on Wednesday night. Out on one of the darkest stretches of highway I drive to get myself home from driving him to work and there were two deer in the lane. And it ended badly. And we are guessing the van is totaled. We have not been able to get it checked out yet because the pandemic and everybody's closed or going by different rules and it's frustrating. I'm fine. The deer, two deer are not fine. The van is most definitely not fine, but luckily when my daughter bought her new car, they were only going to give her like $300 in trade in for the Subaru. So she gave me a call and said, Hey, can I park it out in the barn? And Heath will take it when he starts driving. So we spent today getting it out and charging the batteries and airing up the tires and jumping through hoops with the insurance company and the DMV to get everything as everything's legal. We haven't got the title quite all the way switched over, but I have to mail some forms and that will be done. And it would just be so much easier if I could go into the DMV with all the appropriate paperwork and hand them a check and make it happen, but you can't do that anymore. So that was my start to Mania Week. I'm not happy. I'm, I am so stressed, guys. And I have hit the point on the drive home. We've had so much stressful stuff over the past few years. I don't think I can cry anymore. That's, I used to really be a crier, but not so much anymore. I think I cried myself out after the accident with the drunk driver. So other stuff I've been working on this week, I work some more on Furry Friends. I'm stitching books, which don't add a lot to what you can see. They will add to the finished project. And I am still knitting on the Jete. Jete, is that J-E-T-T-E? -T -T -E? Someone please tell me how to pronounce that. I want to say the name of my shawl. It is still coming along. It is going to now be solid in the rusty color until this all reduces down to a point. 
And I'm just picking it up when I need something that will make my hands move. Not in a hurry. I keep thinking, oh, I could get it done quick, but this is not quick. There's a lot of rows left, but I like it. I had been wanting for a long time to knit a striped shawl, and I'm having fun with this one once I got past the initial fear and uncertainty. I'm also reading the Helen Lightholder Mystery Series. They're on Kindle Unlimited, and it is a six-book series. In the past week, I have made it from the beginning to halfway through book five. It is the story of Helen. She is a widow who moves to a small village in England in the 1940s after her husband is killed in World War II. She was left a haberdashery by an aunt she barely knew. And in the first book, she investigates the death and murder of her aunt. And then in the next few books, there are other mysteries in her tranquil little village. And there's kind of an overshadowing mystery behind everything else. There are only about 140 pages a book. They're short and quick. And the mysteries, several of them, it's more like a TV episode than a big long book. But they're entertaining, and it's got a real Nancy Drew vibe to it because she's scrubbing out her aunt's old house and has that can-do attitude, and I'm really liking them. Way more cheerful than the rest of the stuff I've been reading lately. And then I wanted, my favorite thing in the world right now is Bendy Stitchy's new hat. If you have not seen her hat, you need to go look at it because it is awesome and amazing. I started knitting a giant squid for my daughter back in 2014, 2013. It's not crochet like the hat. It does not have nearly as many little suckers as the hat, but it gives me a definite idea of the work and the talent that goes into the hat. I'll put a picture of our squid here. It needs one more tentacle. And it needs the two little fins that go along the side of the squid's head. I was knitting from a library book. I don't know if I will ever finish it. I maybe should leave off the long tentacles and just call the silly thing an octopus and sew up the seams and call it good. That was so much work. And I don't know why. I shouldn't have abandoned it. I know why I abandoned it. I was really sick of doubled up purple acrylic. But... Bendy Stitchy's hat kind of inspired me to maybe think about at some point after mania and after quarantine if I want to do something with the giant squid. I was watching her the video she talks about the hat in and I kept pausing it and putting down my stitching and jumping over to other sites to look up things that she was talking about and that is the most fun way to watch floss tube guys. Back a couple of years ago, my youngest and I were watching a documentary about stained glass windows. It was a 45 minute documentary and I think it took us three and a half hours to get through it because we kept pausing to discuss things or pausing to look up other things or pausing to look up explanations of things that he didn't already know about. Because that's the way we homeschool and it is fun. When we have an exciting subject and the questions are flowing. It is fun. It has led to the side effect that my youngest child will occasionally, when I'm talking to him, ask me to pause. And the first time it was hilarious because you could see in his brain when the moment at which he realized that he had just asked his mother to pause and his mother is not a YouTube video. <laughs> It's a, I mean, he communicated. He wasn't being rude. It was just, hold that thought. I've got another question I need an answer to so that I can make sense of what you're telling me. He's not allowed to ask anyone but his mother to pause. and We have fun with it. So I think that is everything I have got going on right now. Like I said, I am really excited about Mania. I hope that... Things will remain just calm enough that I can start some new starts. I've got other things that I didn't show you here in this stack that I'm equally excited about. I did pause to answer the phone 
halfway through filming this, my husband drove the Subaru to work tonight because he wanted to make sure that the engine and everything was behaving properly before he turned me loose with it. He called because he had stopped to get gas and when he got back in the car he got buzzed by something with a stinger and it's very possible that the Subaru might have a nest of honeybees in it that it picked up while it was sitting out in the barn. He only had a couple more miles to get to work and he's going to call me in the morning if he needs me to come with a bee suit and a smoker. <laughs> the way our week has gone, it would be totally, totally expected to have a beehive in the Subaru that he didn't find until he drove it to work. I'm Michelle with Michelle's Romantic Tangle. Thank you for watching. Let me know, are you doing mania? Do you have a planned number of starts or doing a free-for-all like I am? I've got some other stuff I'm working on, and if life cooperates, I will be back with more videos very, very soon. Otherwise, it'll be as soon as I can do it. See you later.